As mentioned in previous parts of our Ragnarok series, link in the description below in case you missed them, there are many important events leading up to Ragnarok, thus setting it off. The binding of Fenrir and the death of Baldr were two major precursors. Another noteworthy event is something known as the Fimbleventer, or Great Winter. This is a harsh winter that lasts for three years with no summer in between, signifying the world's decline and the chaos that is to come. Here's how the Fimbleveter, or the Three Winters Without Summer, is a precursor to Ragnarok. The Three Winters is a warning that Ragnarok is imminent. It's a break from the natural order of things. In many mythologies, major disruptions in the environment or the natural order of things can be seen as omens or larger cataclysms. Due to these harsh winters, crops would fail, animals would die, and famine would spread. This would then lead to societal breakdown. People would do unspeakable things to one another out of desperation, symbolizing the decay and destruction of the world. As the world plunges into chaos, the boundaries keeping evil forces at bay begin to weaken. Loki, the trickster god who is bound by the gods as punishment for causing the death of the god Baldr, is set free, which led to his participation in the events of Ragnarok. The chaos and disorder caused by Fimbleveter set the stage for the grand battle which is the central event of Ragnarok. Gods, monsters, giants, and other mythical creatures begin to take different sides, leading to havoc and widespread destruction. After the cataclysmic events of Ragnarok, including the great battle and the world being submerged in water, life starts again. The surviving gods gather and the world is reborn and set on a path of renewal. The three winters without summer are not just a random event in Norse mythology. It is an event that marks the beginning of the end, helping feed into the theme of renewal and rebirth after chaos and destruction. In Norse mythology, Fenrir is one of the most fearsome and significant figures tied to Ragnarok. Fenrir, also called Fenrisulfur, is a monstrous wolf and also one of the children of Loki and the giantess Angbua. Fenrir's narrative and its relation to Ragnarok can be found in sources like the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda. As previously mentioned, Fenrir played a significant role during Ragnarok. Here's a breakdown of Fenrir's connection to Ragnarok. Fenrir, along with his siblings Jormungandr, the Midgard Serpent, and Hel, who rules the land of the dead, was prophesied to cause many problems for the gods. Because of this, the gods decided to bind Fenrir to prevent him from wreaking havoc. They tried binding him with two chains, but he broke free from both. Eventually, the gods asked the dwarves to make a special binding called Gleipnir, which was made of different items. These included a woman's beard, the breath of a fish, and the sound of a cat's footsteps. It looked like a thin silk ribbon, but was incredibly strong. Fenrir, suspicious of the god's intention to bind him with Gleipnir, only allowed them to bind him if one of the gods placed their hand in his mouth as a pledge of good faith. Tyr volunteered, even though he knew the risks. When Fenrir found himself bound and unable to break free, he bit off Tyr's hand in anger. Fenrir's binding is directly related to the events of Ragnarok. It was prophesied that during Ragnarok, Fenrir would break free from his chains and run wild. The sky would darken and there would be earthquakes, releasing Fenrir from Gleipnir. During the battle, Fenrir would confront Odin, king of the Asur gods. In this confrontation, Fenrir would swallow Odin whole, killing him. However, Odin's son, Vier, would then take revenge, killing Fenrir. Venrir, using a special shoe made from the scraps of all the shoes ever made, would put his foot on Fenrir's lower jaw, grab the upper jaw with his hands, and tear the wolf apart. Fenrir's binding and release can be seen as a representation of uncontrollable forces, both external and internal. By binding Fenrir, the gods delay the inevitable but cannot ultimately prevent it. This ties into Ragnarok's themes of destruction and rebirth, and the cyclical nature of existence, where creation leads to destruction, and destruction leads to a new creation. Fenrir's release is a crucial event that precedes the full onset of Ragnarok, signaling the impending destruction and rebirth of the world in Norse mythology. Baldr is a beloved god in Norse mythology, known for his beauty, grace, and fairness. 
The death of Baldr is one of the key events that set the stage for Ragnarok, the end of the world in Norse mythology. Here's a breakdown of Baldr and his involvement in Ragnarok. Baldr begins to have dreams of his own death. These dreams worry the gods, including his mother, Frigg, who does her best to prevent them. To protect her Baldr, Frigg extracts oaths from every creature, object, and force, ensuring they would not harm Baldr. However, she overlooks the mistletoe and believes it to be too young and harmless to do any considerable damage. The trickster god Loki discovers this oversight. Jealous of Baldur's popularity and being as mischievous as he is, Loki creates a dart made of mistletoe. The gods, confident of Baldur's invulnerability, make a game of throwing weapons at him, watching them deflect harmlessly. Loki gives the mistletoe dart to Baldur's blind brother, Hod, and guides his hand to throw it at Baldur. The dart hits Baldur, which later leads to his death. Devastated, the gods go to the underworld to negotiate with the goddess Hel, who agrees to release Baldur from the land of the dead if all things both living and dead weep for him. Almost everything weeps for Baldur, except for Loki, who is disguised as an old giantess, sealing Baldur's fate. In revenge for the death of Baldur, the gods capture Loki and bind him using the entrails of his child. They put a venomous snake above him, which drips venom onto him. His wife, Segan, collects the venom in a bowl, but when she has to empty it, the venom drips onto Loki, causing great pain, which in turn leads to earthquakes. Baldur's death is a significant omen, marking the beginning of the end for the gods. Many different events, including the binding of Loki, start of the breakdown of the relationships among the gods, leading to Ragnarok. After Ragnarok, it is foretold that Baldr and Hod will be resurrected and rule the new world together.